you, Mavis. That was very good. Right, come on, Mr. Humphreys. It's your turn to wash and I'll dry. Oh, have you got any gloves? I don't want to get washed day red hands. Oh, uh, well, these should fit. <laughs> <laughs> They're dads. <laughs> I can't imagine him doing any washing up. No, he uses them to deliver the calves. <laughs> I'll wait. You were in the local paper. They covered our cricket match. Oh. Millstone Manor triumphs over Tender Bottom. Does it mention me? You're the star. The winning stroke was scored by B. Slocum, 86. What? <laughs> now, listen. 86 was the score that Millstone needed to beat Tender Bottom. The formidable Mrs. Slocum thundered down the pitch seven times to carry her team to victory. A number of attempts were made to carry her shoulder high, and this was finally achieved using a forklift trap. <laughs> <laughs> Those cheeky young cub reporters. Well, there's a picture of us as well. Look, there's you, there's me, there's Miss Trumphys in the slips. <laughs> And there's Captain Peacock out with his bales in mid-air. <laughs> Is that Mr. Rumble without his glasses? No! That's the winning turnip in the vegetable and flower show. <laughs> oh, I mean that one. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> ah, that's probably the postman. I'll go. Oh, look, it's Captain Peacock and Miss Lovelock coming back. Where have they been? Mr Lovelock's been taking him for his first ride. Yeah, he was hanging on to the towel rail, doing knee bends for half an hour this morning. Oh, that's what the crackling noise was. <laughs> I thought somebody lit a bonfire. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Pat it. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, well done, old chap. <laughs> now, to dismount, you simply take your feet out of the stirrups, throw your leg over the horse's head, and slide down. Yeah. Like this. I see. Yes. Well, <clears throat> well, I can remove my feet from the stirrups, all right, but the, <laughs> the throwing bit doesn't work very well. <laughs> Lovelock to get your horse to sit down, then you could slide off down the tunnel. It's not a circus horse, it's a hunter. Well, if it'd stand still, I could get a ladder. <laughs> yeah, tell you what, why don't you walk him under a tree, hang on to a low branch, get it to G up, and then when he's gone, you drop down and we'll catch you. Really, Miss Brown. Oh, oh, the feeling seems to be returning to my lower regions. <laughs> Perhaps I could help you to get your leg over, Captain Peter. <laughs> I should leave that to Miss Lovelock, Mrs. Slocum. She's had more experience. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Humphreys. Oh. Mm. Oh. 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 It's brought the colour to your cheeks. Oh. How did he get on? He's got a natural rhythm when walking. Unfortunately, a rabbit popped out of a hedge and the horse bolted. <laughs> Must have been quite a sight. <laughs> By the time I caught up with him, the eyes were rolling, nostrils flaring, foam was coming from the mouth. On top of that, he lost his hat. <laughs> He's sweating a bit. You're right. Perhaps I'd better give him a rub down. Well, it's all the same to you. I, I think I'll have a shower. <laughs> Dear, dear. What's that, Mrs. Slocum? Poor Mrs. Axelby. I thought she was still in Spain. She's joined a terrorist group. And she's not enjoying it a bit. She's not blowing things up, is she? She's known as a sleeper. They're going to activate her when the revolution starts. <laughs> What's she doing in the meantime? She's shacked up with a clerk in the Attorney General's office. <laughs> She has to go through his briefs when he's having a siesta. <laughs> well, she always wanted adventure. Mr Humphreys, you're looking rather distraught. They want to suspend me at the Daffodil Club. <laughs> that sounds very painful. <laughs> it's a gambling debt. I was playing strip poker. <laughs> I owe them two pairs of Y-fronts and a cardigan. <laughs> ah, Captain Peacock, there's a registered letter for you. It feels like coins. Oh, 
Is there anything else in the mail? Oh, yes, yeah, quite good. We've had one or two inquiries for bookings. <laughs> what have you got, Captain Peacock? Well, uh, I earned certain medals during the war. I never bothered to claim them. Well, I, I haven't much use for that sort of thing, as you know. But seeing the guns of Navarone a few weeks ago brought it all back to me. So I wrote to the Ministry of Defence, giving them the various theatres of war in which I saw service. Oh, and what have they sent you? Um, the Africa Star and the Defence Medal. Mm, they look good on your pyjamas. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm entitled to much more than that. Of course you are. What about that time you was parachuted into Yugoslavia with the chipmunks? Uh, <laughs> the Chetniks, Miss Browns. <laughs> well, there's still a D notice slapped on that little adventure. I'm forbidden to speak about it even now. <laughs> There's a coincidence. While the guest booked in for next Thursday is called Slocum. Oh, well, it's not an uncommon name in the Dales. Cecil G. Slocum. What? <laughs> Are you all right, Mrs. Slocum? You've gone quite pale under your pancake. <laughs> oh, no, it couldn't be. <laughs> What's the matter? Is he a relation? I was married to a, a Cecil G. Slocum. Oh, that's right. How long was it now since he walked out on you? He didn't walk out on me. <laughs> he just disappeared. Where? In Sainsbury's. <laughs> it was quite a shock, I can tell you. He'd just gone out one morning at ten to nine to buy a pound of slightly salted butter. They used to cut it off a big slab and then bang it into shape with wooden bats. Oh, I know. Yes, they had little grooves in them. They used to keep them in water. That's right, Mr Humphreys. Mm, I didn't know he left you as long ago as that. <laughs> so what happened? Well, it got to be half past twelve. And I thought to myself, that's funny. What did you do? I had Marge on my toes. <laughs> anyway... At one o'clock, I went out to look for him. Well, I scoured every pub in the area until I'd used up all the housekeeping. <laughs> but there wasn't a sign of him. That was 42 years ago this Easter. How oh, very sad, Mrs Slocum. You know, nobody could understand it. I mean, he was devoted to me. And to the pussy I had at the time. <laughs> But you know, it's a funny thing. You know how these things go in waves? Well, there were quite a few people disappeared about that time. I mean, the wife of the man next door vanished into thin air. The very next door. In Sainsbury's? Oh, no. Co-op. <laughs> well, uh, here it is. Here's the letter. Oh, no. Is it him? I'd know that signature anywhere. Many's the time I've traced it onto one of his checks. <laughs> Until it closes his account. What are you going to do, Mrs Slocum? Oh, don't worry, Mrs Slocum. He probably won't recognise you after 40 years. There was that expensive paper and raised writing and all. Slocum Leisure Industries, Chairman and Managing Director Cecil G. Slocum. He's obviously done well for himself. Oh, how ignominious. <laughs> He's gone up in the world and I've gone down. Oh, come, come, Mrs Slocum. You, you've always held a good position. I was a shop girl. A poor shop girl. Nonsense. I didn't even sell grand pianos and tiaras. That's all Nick as a prize. <laughs> and now I'm nothing better than a chambermaid. I live in the attic. I haven't even got a room for me. All I have to bunk up with her. Mrs Slocum, he needn't know you bunk up with me. While he's here, I'll move out. I'll go back to the room with the leaky roof. Of all the gin joints in all the world, he had to choose this one. I can't pick it. I'll have to go. No, 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 don't be hasty, Mrs. Slocum. Look, look, um, we can hide you in the cellar till he's gone. How long is he staying? A week. <laughs> a week soon passes. Look, you'll be all right. You can have lots of blankets and a primer stove and we'll bring you down sandwiches and cups of cocoa and... You can have the telly and your own poo. <laughs> well, what's it matter if he's done well and she hasn't, as long as she was happy? Mm, she's very class conscious, Mrs Slocum. She always gets into the first class compartment and then walks down to the second. <laughs> well, I think people were happier when they knew their place in life. 
When I was a little girl, there were all the servants in the big house, and then there was lots and lots of workers running the farm. Well, here they all are, look. That's Mad Jed, the young cowman. He fell out of an A-loft onto his head. <laughs> but he was happy. <laughs> oh, then there's Mr. Ratchet, the gamekeeper. He drunk too much. But he was happy. <laughs> Then there was Rosie Bell. She was the dairy maid. She had a vision. It made her hair stand on end. What did she have a vision of? Well, we couldn't find out. But she could never get it to lie down again. <laughs> but she was happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me in Dad's arms. Oh, you don't look happy. Well, neither would you be if you had old potato sacks for nappies. <laughs> Where's your mother? Oh, she ran off with the blacksmith. <laughs> I bet she was happy. <laughs> oh, and look at that old cart we're all standing on. My dad made that out of old beer crates. Well, same as the bed he's putting in the cellar for Mrs Slocum. Oh, Mrs Slocum will never sleep on a homemade bed. She's definitely Kendall Milne interior sprung, is Mrs Slocum. <laughs> well, why don't we give her our room and we'll camp out down there? It's only a small bed, but we'll manage if we turn over together. Oh. Let's not complicate things. I might turn at the wrong time and we'll be up on. <laughs> we are Mrs. Slocum. Now look, you'll be as snug as a fucking a brick. <laughs> I fail to see why you have to hide. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. I quite agree, Captain Peacock. Just because you started off on more and finished up on more. But who's to say he's going to recognise you anyway? Well, I didn't at first. And nobody knowed you better than I did. <laughs> I'm sorry, Captain Peacock, but I can't stay here. It's like being in cell block H. Listen. Why don't you come and bed down in my cottage? <laughs> you, I'll give you breakfast in bed and we can have a good laugh about old times. Mr. Moulter, please keep it down. It's a job for you about. <laughs> Mrs. Slocum, I think I ought to tell you. He's here. What? He's not supposed to be here till tomorrow. But he got the dates wrong. What does he look like? Has he got red hair? Well, his hair's receding a bit like mine. <laughs> <laughs> Has a few ginger threads among the gold. Medium height? Medium everything. That's him. <laughs> it seems he's not just here as a guest. His group is looking for property and land to develop as a conference centre and leisure park. He said he'd make a substantial offer if the place suits them. But we can't sell. It's a trust. <laughs> oh, trusts can be broken when there's a lot of cash at stake. What's he doing now? Well, I left him looking round the ground floor, but he wants to inspect down here on the foundations. Oh, he mustn't find me here. Tell you what, come and hide in this old pre-soul. Mm. This is where they used to hide to get away from Oliver Cromwell. Oh, gracious me. Oh. Oh. They must have had some very small priests. <laughs> Tell you what, try backing in. <laughs> Oh, I can't stand there. It smells of old priests. <laughs> Tell you what, you can climb through this window. Yes, uh, you get up first, Mr. Moulter, and open the window up for her. Yeah, right, you're oh, okay. All right. Come along, come along. We'll give you a leg up. There doesn't come. seem to be a switch. Oh, oh, don't let him come down here. Send him off, Mr. Rumbold. Oh, uh, we're trying to fix up a light for you. Perhaps you can come down later. Oh, oh. Well, I... Our maintenance crew is fixing up a light for you downstairs. Uh, uh, Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. <laughs> Entertain, Mr. Slocum. I'll go and try and speed up the uh, maintenance crew. <laughs> Certainly, sir. Well, how can I entertain you, Mr. Slocum? <laughs> Gin and tonic? I never touched the stuff. I had a wife who couldn't leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible when it gets to that state. <laughs> Shocking. She got through the housekeeping by Tuesday. I'll tell you what, while we're waiting, could you show me the outside? Certainly, sir. We'll start round the back. <laughs> Walk this way. Push! Push! Harry 
recall a similar scene in Winnie the Pooh. He got stuck in Rabbit's Hole. No wonder it got banned from Brent Library. <laughs> Oh, gosh, if you was a priest, Rachel, Cromwell would have had you by now. <laughs> oh, and I'm only wearing this thin frock. I didn't put my old ratting coat round you. Oh, you're too kind. <laughs> I see you have quite a large acreage. We could introduce some game birds into the wooded area. And the visitors could bang away when they're in season. I suppose you can do what you like if it's private. <laughs> oh, look, it's him! It's him! <laughs> is it from the outside staff? Uh, yes, this is Mr. Moulter, the farm manager. How do? <laughs> and this is the wife, Rachel. Say hello to the nice gentleman, Rachel! <laughs> Oh, no. She's a bit shy with strangers. But she's all right when she gets going. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right, please. Certainly is, Mr. Moulturd. Do you uh, work on the farm, Mrs. Moulturd? Oh, ah, uh, right. <laughs> uh, have you any children? No. But didn't for want to try in, is it? <laughs> Do you live in the main house? No. I got a nice little cottage. Well, I want to see that later. Yeah, you'll have to come round for a cup of tea, won't you, Rachel? Oh, ah! Uh, <laughs> oh, I shall enjoy that. You'll make him some buns, won't you, me darling? Oh, ah! Uh, <laughs> Mrs. Moulton's quite famous for her buns, aren't you, Mrs. Moulton? Oh, ah! Uh, <laughs> 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 He really believes that Mrs. Slocum is Mrs. Moulturd. Well, he seemed to. Poor Mrs. Slocum's got to make tea for him so he can inspect the cottage. <laughs> he must indeed be interested in the property. Oh, you don't want to sell this place. You're building up quite nicely. And Mr. Humphreys is just settling down, aren't you, Mr. Humphreys? Mm, well, I am sleeping better. <laughs> <laughs> the farmyard noises hardly disturb me at all. That's right. And he even slept through the early morning cock today. <laughs> Do you know, I must have done. <laughs> anyway, as I see it, according to the terms of the trust, we're not allowed to sew. No, otherwise we would have sold it, right, or copped the lolly. Well, as I read the document, if the trustees get an offer higher than the market price, they're obliged to sell and distribute the capital amongst the beneficiaries, namely us. Well, what is the market value? Well, in the present situation, in the present state of structural condition, let's say 350,000? That's nearly 50,000 each. I say sell. Well, no, hang on a minute, Miss Browns. Even well invested, that would bring you in less than 100 pounds a week. Well, we did better than that with the tour party at the weekend. Yeah, well, going to one of the provisions, the staff have to be kept on. We'd still have our jobs. No, but we would not be our own bosses. Yeah, and you know what rich people is like? They'd have you working your fingers to the bone. And Mr. Humphreys is not an early riser. <laughs> Are you? Do you know, I never have been. <laughs> I think I should warn you that I saw the figure 550 on Mr. Slocum's notes. Mm, perhaps he wants his early morning tea at 10 to 6. <laughs> hey, you, old woman. You do realise this is private property? It's me, you dusty person. <laughs> My word, you have gone native. You see, my ex-husband is here, and I don't want him to know how I've come down in the world. So you've disguised yourself as a millionaire tramp? Will you look in the kitchen window and see if you can see a man with receding red hair, a plain face and medium everything else? <laughs> There is. Oh, heck. It's Mr. Rumbold. <laughs> is the coast clear? Yeah, come on, he's upstairs having a siesta. Oh, I've had such a time at Mr. Moulter's house. Do you know he's got a photograph? He says it's me pulling up radishes as a land girl. Well, it was taken from behind. It could have been anybody. <laughs> oh, take the notice of him. He's got lots of photos taken from behind a land girl pulling up radishes. It were one of his weaknesses. He were land girl mad. 
He was quite sorry when Hitler packed it all in and they had to go home. <laughs> He's so earthy. He wanted me to make him some buns. He gave me a sack of flour, a bag of raisins, and told me to get on with it. <laughs> and do you know he's got a cooking stove with 1886 on the door? <laughs> oh, never you mind that. I'll go and do it. Uh, Mrs Slocum, we were just discussing what the implications will be if your husband buys the hotel. Cecil, buy this hotel? Yeah, Mr Rumbob was saying you'd have to keep us on as staff. Well, me work for him as a chambermaid. <laughs> Mrs Slocum, don't upset yourself. And him walking about looking down his nose at me. Of course, I know my magnetism's gone. I kept it going for 20 years. Now I was hoping he'd come back. And then your magnetism lost its pull. <laughs> Oh, don't worry, Mrs Slocum. I'm sure he'd let you take redundancy. I've been redundant for 40 years! <laughs> I don't think that was very tactful, Mr Rumbold. Here are, Mrs Slocum. Wipe your eyes on the tea towel. Oh, thank you, love. <laughs> <laughs> something. If he was to take on the number of staff that they had on the farm in the old days, then, well, he might find the proposition not really worthwhile. Did they have a lot? Oh, well, look at that. Oh, blimey. That's enough to put anyone off. Mm, well, they're all happy. <laughs> well, I... I'm sure Mr Moulturd could rustle up a few farming types from the village to make up the numbers. You know, half a dozen local yokels and the proposition would not seem cost-effective. Mm. Cheer up, Mrs Slocum. All is not yet lost. Except your magnetism. <laughs> right, now let me get this straight. You have a head waiter and two assistant waiters. Your barman, a hall porter, and two chambermaids. Your manager, a chef, and two kitchen hands. And me. I've seen the barman and the manager. Where are the others? It's their day off. And on top of all that, there's the outside staff. That's right. Well, I've only met Mr. and Mrs. Moulturd. Who else is there? Well, I'm not sure. There's quite a few. <laughs> oh, you've been a long time, Dad. Mr Slocum will be here in a minute. Where's Mrs Slocum? Oh, she's upstairs. She's been looking out some of Mum's old clothes. <laughs> By gosh, Mrs Slocum, you're a fine figure of a woman. I think you've took your rightful place here at last. Mr. Moulturd, I'm only doing this for Millstone Manor, so don't get any fancy ideas, and you're very late. Well, I've been up the village to get the blokes like Captain Peacock said. Oh, who have you got? Nobody. <laughs> They've all gone to the cattle show. I don't know when they'll be back. I left messages all round. Have you told Captain Peacock? Yeah, he didn't have to take on. He used words I ain't heard used since I run over the vicar's foot with a tractor. <laughs> They're coming. Do I look all right? Yes, but you can't possibly be my daughter. We said we hadn't any children. Yeah, I said she was barren. Well, I'd best keep out of sight then. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, if Mr Moulter didn't find anybody in the village, well, you better pretend to be one of the workers. Right, I'll be back in a minute. Oh, gosh, oh. Come in, kind sir. We be simple folk here, uh, but we be very happy to share our humble grub. This is Mr Slocum from London. This is Mrs Moulturd. Yes, I've already had the pleasure. That makes two of us. <laughs> we never had no one from London before, have we, Morris? I bet you've got a fine big house, and no doubt you've got a fine young wife. One of they bimbos of a sugar business. Do you mind if we sit down? Oh, yeah. vous <laughs> That's French for sit down. <laughs> I learned that at school. I waited 60 years to say that. <laughs> Would you like a nice cup of tea? Thank you. I expect you're used to fancy china. <laughs> Help yourself to buns, and there's butter there. Slightly salted from Sainsbury's. <laughs> you know, I haven't been to Sainsbury's for 40 years. Well, where the bloody hell have you been in the meantime? <laughs> Mrs. 
Moulter is always interested in people's travel stories. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Moulter. Who's this? Oh, I'm Rosie Bell, one of the dairy maids. There's several of us. How do you do? <laughs> what an unusual hairdo. She had a vision. Oh, that's why it stood on end. But I'm happy. <laughs> What's for tea? Buns. Oh. With slightly salted butter from Sainsbury's. <laughs> ah. And who is this? I'm the gamekeeper. Ratchet's the name, catch it's the game. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> so, you're the fine gentleman from London who's going to take care of us all, eh? <laughs> we'll be one big happy family. <laughs> I brung you a rabbit. <laughs> if, it's, if it's too big to go into your briefcase, I'll chop it in half. Oh, no, that's fine. You can give it to that bimbo to cook. <laughs> you could hardly describe my cook as a bimbo. Take no notice of Mrs. Mole Turd. She reads the sun a lot. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. <laughs> I couldn't find my hat, and then when I found it, it was on my head. <laughs> this be mad Jed. Who fell on his head? We thought he were dead. <laughs> but I'm happy. <laughs> I whittled you some wood. I made your clothes, Peg. I forgot to do the middle bit, though. Oh, it's very nice of you, uh, Jed. Oh, I'm like that. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like this. <laughs> Most of the time I'm like that. <laughs> it's been a fine gentleman who's going to look after us all. Oh, I was telling Ed and Ed and Fred. No brothers? No, my sisters, but they're happy. <laughs> Now, there are rather more workers on the estate than I'd allowed for, Mr. Moulturd. Oh, they breed like rabbits down here. <laughs> Except her. She's barren. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Rosie Bell? Eh? I thought she was Rosie Bell. Oh, uh, well, we're twins. Twins? You don't look alike. Well, that's because we was born at separate times. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry I'm late. I just found out I'm pregnant, but I'm happy. <laughs> Who's the father? It'd be you, Jed. <laughs> Are you happy? I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> I, uh, I got some good news. I found a few of the farm workers. Come in, come in. Oh, wow. You ready to get more mugs, Moritz? Tell us a story about London. <laughs> well, I hardly know where to start. How about Sainsbury? <laughs>